previous video, I had mentioned that this song started out as part of a library of loops that we were creating. I like the characteristics of the cloud. Yeah, I do too. It was an idea that we had during the global quarantine that we all went through. Even if, you know, you didn't like the clav sound, the, or we decided that the clav sound was not the sound, the well, integrity. Well, and it gives it the chance to pump up if you want to. Like, if I'm doing those horns, I can't start going. So we used these loops to test out a method that we had for sharing and collaborating on music remotely. And that involved Ubuntu Studio, which was our production suite, and our DAW, which is Ardor, and we would share the actual sessions from the Ardor files that we recorded using a service called GitHub. GitHub is actually a version control system. It's a service that's mainly meant for using code. Developers use it to collaborate on websites or software development. It occurred to me when we were doing our recording sessions that the main file, the main Ardor file that you would double click on to open the session, if I right clicked on that just to see what was inside, I noticed it really was just code. And I thought maybe we could share these files along with the folders that had the audio in them to GitHub and they would have the exact same setup, effects, recording sessions, and things like that for all of us on both ends. So over this time, we collaborated on these loop libraries and song sessions. We even started to turn some of these into longer songs, more than a loop library, build off of them and create them as something else. And one of those loops was this one here that was uh, temporarily just given the code name Slippery Friction. Or, well, three variations in one main. And the okay. first one is Slippery Friction was just the name of it. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's a name that Rob came up with. And I began arranging this particular loop into more of a song structure. But as I arranged them, it just kind of sounded like backing tracks. It didn't sound like a song. It needed something more. So I played what I had so far for Rob and Cliff, and as they were sitting down listening to it, both of them were holding onto guitars, and they were just kind of noodling and playing along as they listened. And as the song played, I kind of heard something from both parts of what they were doing. They weren't paying attention to what the other one was doing, they were just playing along. So. Let him start first, because you're you're actually leading it and he should be leading I it. I tried to have them recreate what they had done, but since they were just kind of messing around as they listened, they didn't really remember what it was. So as I had the click track running, I tried to steer them in the right direction as to what I think they had played. And we were able to record and create kind of what they had done. And even as we were listening back, Rob still continued to kind of play along as we listened to the tracks they just recorded. And I heard him do something that was yet another line that might be kind of cool to add to it. So I hit record again and we laid down this new idea that Rob had just come up with. We still wanted to do more with the song. So the next time we got together, Eric was listening to the song and we had him just lay down ideas for it. But even though we weren't sure 
what to do. Eric didn't have an idea. We didn't really have an idea for what he should do. Just had him play along with it, play anything, just play whatever came to mind. And we recorded the entire time. So what we did is we would just listen for things that he would do from here to there and point out anything that sounded interesting. Okay. And it didn't matter where in the song he was playing it, it was the ideas that we were trying to capture. Ah. One of the things that we really enjoyed while we were working on these songs remotely over the past few years was experimenting with the recordings that we had. Uh, playing anything, cutting them up and putting them in different places in the song. So that was kind of what we were looking for while Eric was trying out these different guitar parts. We would just cut up different parts of the riffs, even sometimes just notes, and place them in different places to see what it would be. And then we would actually arrange these into new lines that weren't even played. And as we went through this whole process, it was starting to come together as a song. It was starting to form into something. And it progressed from the rhythm guitar part that Rob and Cliff had recorded, and now it had sort of a lead melody guitar that Eric had made. But at this point, the song still had the original programmed drums that were from the original loop. We wanted the song to have something more dynamic, and that's when we decided to turn on the cameras and actually test it out on a live stream. These live streams have really been a nice way for us just to force ourselves to try out ideas while people are watching. And sometimes when we do that, something happens. And during this particular session, Rob did something that really opened up the song. He had a whole new section that he did with a drum line. But the problem was, is we still were waiting on a multi-track sound card to record his drums on these tracks. 